stupidest salespeople in the world story. Okay. That's why I picked this theme. <laughs> uh, and then I'll go right to your, I promise I'll go right to your thing. So a little background here, stupidest salesman in the world uh, today. Um, my daughter needed a car uh, and I promised it to her. She was in New York city. And so I flew out. Uh, this is in, um, I think this was in May of this year. I flew out uh, to, uh, I flew out to Queens, a Honda dealership. She picked out a car. Um, you know, we did our little consumer report research and everything like that. In fact, I have all the old paperwork from the car here. Okay, so I bought her the car. Um, and everything is groovy and she transferred her job. She now lives in LA. Okay, uh, a couple of weeks ago, she had an accident, uh, car, somebody hit the car, car was totaled. Okay, nobody was hurt, Every, uh, that, which is all I cared about. And now she needs a new car because she's been riding her bike and using Uber in LA for a couple of weeks now. Oh, goodness. Okay, so <laughs> she's very resilient. I mean, she's a go-getter. She, go she, uh, she has three jobs now. I'm very proud of both my children. They're, they're go-getters, they're workers. Um, and they didn't move back home <laughs> like most millennials. So I, yeah. did something, I did something very wrong or very right. <laughs> anyway, she needs a new car. I said, go to a dealership, have them contact me. Cause I'm going to mom and my, we're going to help her do the loan. It's one of the nice things you can do when you have a business, you can help your children once in a while, not to make them dependent, but it, you want, you like to help them out once in a while if you can. And so the guy calls, um, so uh, the guy calls me up yesterday on a Sunday. I'm in the car, and he says, I have a few questions. Of, um, you know, a oh, uh, let's see. which uh, it's, a, it's a dealership near Lovely Audrey, in fact. Um, hi. Hi, Audrey. And so the uh, guy calls me up. Mr. Diamond just wanted to see, check a few things. What, what do you want on the car? And, and I'll give you the different financing or whatever it is. I said, fine. And I said, this is what I want. And get back to me today with some numbers because I want to I get this thing going. She needs a car. Okay. So I said, call me back in about an hour and a half. I'll be back home. Um, he sent me an email. I responded. I said, I want those numbers. Do you think he got back to me that this is a $36,000 no. car? No. What do you think I'm still doing? Yep. I was ready to say yes on a $36,000 approximately sale. When, when, can you imagine all the marketing Honda does, all the, everything they do, all the salespeople and the mechanics and everything they do. And I'm a guy who's ready to say yes. I, I knew my numbers and price they, you know, and everything else. I just want some final numbers and figures and when the car can be delivered. Just the last thing. So are we so, stupid salespeople? I'm ready to close. And they didn't, and nobody had the brains to call me up and close me yesterday. Are they going to call me and close me today? I don't know. Here it is, 934 in California, and nobody has called my home or office yet to sell me that car. I'm a buyer. I haven't said anything like I'm shopping or anything. I just want to get into the car. Everything's been positive. Money's not an issue, credit or anything else but nobody's called me back. Nobody has picked. What do I always say? What's the sign say? Do you the phone. All we got to do is talk to people. Okay. And for some reason, this dopey, this stupid salesman has not called me back for $36,000. What is he doing? Why? Why? I have no, he's a stupid salesman. <laughs> he doesn't care. He does, you're not important enough to him. Oh, but They're not important enough to him. You know, I just got a brand new Honda. I love my car salesman who's coming with me for real estate. And he's the number one in this area. If you need a good Honda salesman, he sells 40 cars a month. Why? Did, oh, good question. And that, I didn't forget you, Marcus. Don't worry. Why does, how come he sells 40 cars a month when probably the average person maybe does one every week, every two weeks or two? He talks to people. What does he do? What did he do special with you? How did he make you feel? Well, he made me feel special. He also sold me my last car. I just got a brand new Honda because my lease was up. I probably got the one you want. I just got it. How much now he knows. 
Now, I just, I, I'm a haggler, but here's the thing. When I called him uh, exactly one month ago and said, hey, my lease is up. I want, I want the new one before the new, new one comes up and these are finished and now I don't want to pay 200 more a month or whatever if I'm going to pay monthly payments because I lease on purpose. Anyway, so he said, you know what? Let's make an appointment. Come down tomorrow. And I did, and he took care of me. There's a little bit of a battle back and forth, but in the end, I got exactly what I wanted. And that is my guy. So you don't mind the haggling and everything else, but you, there was a mutual respect there, would you say? Totally. Oh, no, as soon as I get there, there he is. It's, you know, he's the number one in the, he's the number one in the area. Why? And, um, why is it? Give me the essence, though. Give me the give me the he, kernel he, of truth. He re, well, part of him refuses to take no for an answer from a lot of people, and he goes that I he's got that certain something where he's just persistent and consistent. Okay. He works on his skills. What made you pick? Go to him, and I mean, uh, L.A. There's like six, seven Honda dealerships in the uh, in a fifty mile radius there. Okay. Uh, I, what made me go to him is I wanted the Honda of Hollywood is the closest one to me. And he was the one I connected with at that brand, at that dealership. And I just liked him and he made me feel like I could trust him and I can. And he listened to me. Okay. Even though trust. he's a car salesman. Okay. So even maybe there was a better deal somewhere else. But when we get into likability and trust, what happens to our resistance to shopping around? It's just easier to be with someone that you know will take care of you than having it. You know, shopping around here is not easy. Or maybe no. anywhere. I don't know. No. Shopping for a car is a pain in the neck. It is a pain. But at least it's, you have so many dealerships and they're so close. And of yeah. all the car, I mean, it's, if you, anybody here has ever been to L.A., my God, you, you, uh, especially where you go on uh, Rodeo Drive. <laughs> Uh, my God, there's uh, Bentley dealers, uh, Rolls Roy uh, the Rolls Royce dealers, the uh, Jaguar, the um, Lamborghini dealerships. I mean, it's 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 some car heaven in L.A. It really is. Let's go. Go ahead. I'll give you the last word, Audrey, and then we go right to Marcus here. I just think that persistence and consistency. And you know what? I have learned if you don't get this one. Just ride that wave. There's always another one. There will always be another one. Part of me thinks that sometimes I don't close and it's on me. And part of me thinks that sometimes I don't close and that's just the way it goes. I'm not even, I don't even think of it as rejection anymore. I'm so much better. And so I think that's what a lot of salespeople have to get over. That it's not always you. It, sometimes it is you. But sometimes that deal's not meant to work out. Or sometimes you have to fire someone to make room for someone that you can close. Okay. Instead of grasping onto every little nugget that comes your way. They're placing, not all meant for you. Placing value on your time. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, I had to tell you guys my stupid salesperson because I hate waste. Uh, what is it? Uh, what, what is it? Something abhors a vacuum? Mother nature abhors a vacuum or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Nature abhors a vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. Here it is. I want to buy. I have great credit. I have the cash. I have the money. I want to buy it today and get her in a car and get her off that bicycle in L.A. and and and, and every and nobody will. Nobody has called me back and closed me. That's I. I can't. St to me, as a sales trainer, this is a blast for me. Uh, this, uh, you know, this is the great blast for me of all time. Marcos, you're on. Man, I almost want to close you out. I think I can somehow get a Honda Accord out to your daughter there, I think. <laughs> you think? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> Claude, so so there's one Marcos, 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 suppose, you know what? I understand the problem you're going in. My daughter went through the same thing. Marcos, suppose I got a brand new car. I have a good friend who I work with, and I got him to contact your daughter, and we got a car delivered today at a very fair price, and she, so she wouldn't be riding that bicycle or taking Ubers all over the place. If I could solve that problem for you, well, how would you feel about that today, by the way? Well, it sounds good, but man, you just said something right there so fast. I almost missed it. Can you slow down? <laughs> no, it's New York. I'm a New Yorker. I only have one speed. Oh, I, I'm the DQ. Yeah. I'm the DQ kid. I do it quick, man. I mean, 
I mean, so you said you said you know somebody that you you could get me in contact with, and I could buy from him. How much do you love? Price, how much do you love your daughter and want to protect her? Um, more than you could imagine. Suppose I solve this problem, so she gets off that bicycle, stops going in strange cars, Uber drivers, and we got her into a good, safe, brand new car today. Yes, today is what I'm talking about. Which means. Where 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 do you uh, where are you going to send this to? I'm ready to sign. Uh, I'll, send it, I'll send it to you right now, and it's okay to say no to me, but I'll send this to you right now. If you get it back to me, I'll have your daughter in a brand new car by five thirty this afternoon or earlier. Um, look at it. Look out for it right now, then. Boom. It's not that hard. That was a good role play, by the way. It was not a little EQ. A lot, and then a little bit more EQ and close. It's not that hard. Marcos, you're on.